thank you for this privilege to be here. Regulation is the same all over the place. Uh, it has to do with uh, promoting good advertising and protecting the interests of the consumers. In Nigeria, we have an APES body known as Advertising Practitioner Council of Nigeria, which is APCON, and its uh, members consist of uh, representatives of various interest groups, from the advertising agencies, from the advertisers, the medias, and other interest groups. What's the state of play in terms of regulating advertising in South Africa? And talk to us a bit about what your organization okay. and how you see this issue. You know, advertising is a, a very quick moving area. And certainly, I can't talk for other governments, but our government takes about six months to decide what they're having for breakfast. So if we had to give them an advertising problem, by the time they made a decision, the campaign would have come and gone. But more important than that, we also want rules that, first and foremost, my organization wants to protect consumers. But we also want to protect the whole advertising environment. The whole point of advertising regulation is that if the consumer doesn't trust all advertising, the whole advertising space, then they're not going to trust your particular brand. So if consumers don't trust that advertising on a whole is regulated and tells the truth, when your brand makes a particular claim, they're not going to believe that either. Regulators are not talking to industry practitioners regularly. It will seem the regulators see things from one perspective, the practitioners see things from another perspective. I, I want you to talk to me about, a bit about that. Do you have examples of countries where there's a strong private-public conversation regularly? The only example I could probably give that's perfect for that is uh, the traffic light system which was developed in the UK by the Food and Drink Federation, which effectively is a group of brand owners. And that, and that for me, is the way forward, which, which is that the people that actually own the brands, the companies that own these brands, from my perspective, have a responsibility, going back to my Coca-Cola piece and, and to the Frosty thing. If you're a brand owner, you have a responsibility to help consumers to consume responsibility and to, to actually be involved in the conversation. If you duck the conversation, then the regulators will come after you. And that's, for me, the fundamental issue. If we can get regulators, government, um, health professionals, and the brand owners around the table with the creative businesses who were involved in the messaging and designing these things, we actually could create and develop positive messaging platforms and communications that would create effective social lifestyle changes. How does the FDA engage the private sector in this conversation? Because in Ghana, a lot of our electronic media in local language do make a lot of claims in advertising medicines. I think the Food and Drugs Authority recognizes the fact that uh, engagement, not only with the media in terms of advertisement, but engagement of all stakeholders is the way to go as far as uh, good regulation or enhanced regulation is concerned. And so in this area, I think we have a very good relationship with the Advertisers Association of Ghana and, and the media houses. Uh, we try to, uh, we, I think we have meetings trying to uh, let them understand our point from uh, maybe the harm an advert will cause to uh, consumers so that together, because it's not only one person's uh, responsibility, together we can uh, have uh, better regulated advertisement on that media. So okay. I am a millennial by definition. I was born in 1981. Generation Z, those who came after me, they don't trust institutions. They mistrust government. They mistrust big government. They mistrust media. They even mistrust big companies and sometimes brands. They, they like influencers, right? And we have big influencers here. What unique set of challenges does this present to regulating this space? There was a time when a brand could tell a story, put an advertising or make claims or whatever, and, and you could communicate. But, but actually trying to find that the background information, nutrition, makeup, uh, effects on lifestyle and everything, would be quite difficult to do. But now we have access to all information that we want on our fingertips. So I think for younger people, 
brand transparency is really important, and that actually is the thing that knocks onto what I was talking about earlier, which is about stepping up to the plate. The fact that if you're going, a brand's relationship with a consumer is based on trust. I buy a brand because I trust what it says to me. In order to build that trust, we need to be transparent the whole way through. So it also has a whole new challenge because what has happened worldwide with the rise of influencers as the source of advertising messages is that we have to make sure that consumers know when they're getting paid for messaging. And so there has, in the self-regulatory space, been a worldwide rise of codes for influencers in South Africa. In fact, you guys are the first to hear it. The code has gone live on the website today. Mm. Um, so that's our social media code. And that goes to things especially around influencers identifying when they've been given a gift, when they've been paid for the advertising, because exactly that, that generation, the latest generation, also deserve to know what form their information is taking. Is it a genuine opinion or is it a paid for opinion? So, thank you. I, I often say that for programs like this, the questions are more important than the answers. But I'm going to say a big thank you to the panel. So please put your hands together.